If you're the type to cook just anything in your cast iron skillet, that could be a recipe for disaster. Cold food, dirty pans, and first degree burns are just some unsavory outcomes of these huge cast iron skillet mistakes. The cast iron skillet's explosion in popularity can be traced to the rediscovery of just how versatile a single kitchen tool can be. Most dishes and ingredients that are typically pan-fried can be greatly enhanced using cast iron. But as tempting as it is, you shouldn't assume that your cast iron can handle just anything, namely acidic foods such as tomatoes. Whether raw, as a paste, or in a sauce, tomatoes contain a high level of acidity that's not particularly good for your skillet. The acidic reaction can even imbue your food with a metallic tang. Ah, that tastes like coconut. Metal. While the amount of metal ingested is considered negligible, it's enough to make your spaghetti bolognese taste a bit like an aluminum can. Not all hope is lost, however. While you should be wary of cooking acidic foods in a cast iron skillet, using a well-seasoned pan is less of an issue. You'll need that coating, as the acid will quickly strip the seasoning right off the pan. If you do choose to cook tomatoes in your well-seasoned skillet, then get ready to start seasoning it all over again. A well-seasoned cast iron skillet makes a fantastic surface to cook on, but all of that baked-in seasoning can come with a cost. Namely, the oils ingrained in the nooks and crannies that make the pan such a perfect cooking surface will also absorb scents and even flavors of more pungent foods. This is the case with fish, for instance. While Southern Kitchen recommends using a skillet to cook heartier fish like tuna or swordfish, remember to give it a full scrub down and re-seasoning afterward. That is, unless you'd like your morning eggs or pancakes with a slightly fishy aftertaste. Hey, don't knock it till you try it. Uh, that's a hard pass. No thanks. Anyway, while on the subject of fish, even top-seasoned skillets don't make a good cooking surface for delicate fish. Popular fish like salmon risk sticking to a cast iron, which not only makes flipping it difficult, but will also leave much of the fish stuck to the pan. This is because while cast iron skillets are good at retaining heat, they don't distribute it as evenly as other materials. Ultimately, this characteristic makes it more likely for delicate fish to stick to the pan. While most of your pots and pans can be left to soak in soapy water to remove residue, that's exactly what you should avoid with your cast iron skillet. Much like if you were to put it through the dishwasher, soaking cast iron is an easy way to develop rust. However, if you don't remove stray bits of food residue from the skillet, over time, those scraps will gather moisture and become moldy directly on your pan. This is bad not only for your health, but your pan will also begin to develop an unappetizing smell. <laughs> yes, I can definitely smell <laughs> The New York Times suggests an effective method for when you need to remove tough, cooked-on remains from your cast-iron skillet. All it requires is a scrub brush, a little water, and a small fistful of kosher salt. The coarse salt makes a potent cleaning agent as it gently scrubs off the residue while leaching away the grease. What's especially great about this method is that the salt dissolves easily, which means that although it pulls off the residue, your pan seasoning will be left untouched. Your cast iron pan does not have a Teflon coating, so leaving post-cooking residue to sit will only make it harder to scrub out the longer it stays on. One prevalent myth that often prevents cast iron skillet owners from cleaning their pans, apart from a quick wipe down, is the idea that anything more thorough will strip off all the precious seasoning. A simple application of dish soap and water with a sponge is all you need to regularly clean your skillet. If you're worried about losing any seasoning, don't be. Well-seasoned cast iron can withstand most ordinary cleanings. You would need to make a serious effort with rough tools and cleaners to remove the seasoning from your pan. So don't worry about accidentally scrubbing it off, and be sure to regularly clean your cast iron. Using a non-stick cooking spray such as Pam on your cast iron skillet might sound like a shortcut to seasoning. And while these sprays can be used on most pan and skillet kitchenware, using them on cast iron will create way more problems than they solve. Southern Living explains that cooking sprays like Pam contain an ingredient called lecithin. 
While lecithin works fine with most other cooking surfaces, it can be detrimental to cast iron, as it will surely stick to a seasoned pan, making it difficult to remove. After a while, cooking sprays will contribute to the overall degradation of your cast iron skillet by creating a layer of permanent dust. So next time, be sure to reach for the butter or oil. One of the well-earned claims to fame cast iron skillets boast is the ease at which they form a crispy, flavor-sealing crust on most meats. This is what makes cast iron such an excellent surface for making something like fried chicken. However, this ability is reliant upon both a hot pan and room temperature meat that's ready to hit the toasty surface. Cold food hitting a hot cast iron is guaranteed to cause the food to immediately stick to the pan. Here's another curse. May all your bacon burn. Letting your food reach at least an unfrozen temperature allows the cast iron to create a more slippery surface as it cooks the ingredients. If it's frozen or too cold, the pan will pretty much grip the food's exterior, negating its non-stick properties, increasing the likelihood of your food tearing and leaving scraps to clean, and ultimately robbing you of a delicious crust. The solution to this is fairly simple. Plan ahead. Have your food out and fully defrosted by the time you put your cast iron on the stove. While it's a good idea to start cleaning your cast iron as soon as you're done cooking, one of the worst things you can do is use cold water while your pan is still piping hot. Although food particles will wipe off more easily, unless you've given your pan a chance to cool down, you risk causing a sudden flare-up as the water hits any hot grease. While it won't cause a fire, the splattering oil can still burn your skin. Additionally, if the water is too cold when it hits the hot pan, you also risk causing thermal shock to the metal. Ultimately, this can lead to metal fatigue and cause the quality of the cast iron to crack and break. The best method to avoid both problems is to first let your cast iron cool down to, at most, a warm temperature. This way, you negate the risk of causing a grease splatter once you start cleaning. Then, be sure to let the water warm up before you use it to clean, in order to avoid thermal shock and potential damage to your pan. There's more to buying a cast iron skillet than just hopping down to your local store and grabbing the first item on sale. The best cast irons are designed to last not just years, but decades. If you don't do your due diligence, then chances are you'll end up with a cheaply made cast iron model that will cause you more headaches, even if you paid full price. According to the Michelin Guide, yes, that Michelin, there are a number of ways to locate and purchase a high-quality cast iron that will ideally last you forever. Not all cast iron skillets are made the same way, however. Their design and production have also changed with the times. If you want to go with a classic, old-school, long-lasting skillet, consider eBay as a possible source. Otherwise, know that most major skillet brands have a range of different qualities, and depending on the brand you choose, the overall performance of your pan may improve. The best advice is to look at how you want to use your cast iron and make your purchasing decision in line with these purposes. Now that you know how to season your cast iron, other than avoiding oven seasoning, another valuable thing to note is that some oils fare better than others, which leads us to flaxseed oil. What's so great about flaxseed oil? I have no idea. Well, for starters, not only does it have a neutral flavor that won't go pungent over time, it also has an exceptionally high smoke point, which lessens the risk of kitchen hazards. In addition, while other oils may initially get the seasoning job done, they can also soften your cast iron skillet, thus leaving it vulnerable to scratches and more pronounced wear and tear. Flaxseed oil, on the other hand, hardens the cast iron, making it both smooth but also better protected. Nutritionists have been known to recommend that some oils, including flax oil, never be heated, as heating can cause them to oxidize. Thus, medical experts have explored whether or not it is indeed safe to season cast iron skillets with flaxseed oil. The conclusion drawn from this was, even though the oil cure can come off and get into food, there actually isn't any real way to completely avoid reactive oxygen species. Provided we're all taking care of ourselves, a little bit of exposure from your seasoned cast iron is not something to be concerned about. It's best to ensure you're using your cast iron skillet to cook with high-quality oils and to load up on foods that are rich in antioxidants. You've done all the research there is to do and made all the effort to carefully season your cast iron skillet. Quite possibly the worst mistake you can make now is just not using your cast iron skillet often enough. 
Sure, all that preparation may make you feel like it's a dainty old thing that should be brought out only for special occasions, but the single best thing you can do for your cast iron skillet is to use it often. This is because every time you cook in it, the oil and heat work as they did the first time you seasoned it. Hence, over time, you are building layer upon layer of seasoning into your skillet, slowly rendering oil into it and leaving it with a smoother seal and tastier food. If you're in need of some inspiration, here are a few of the best uses for your cast iron skillet. Baking deep dish pizzas, skillet cookies and cornbread, cooking one pan dinners on open fires, roasting nutrient dense vegetables, and more. The possibilities are nearly endless. Not only will your taste buds smile, but your cast iron skillet will become the gift that keeps on giving. And what's more, because a small amount of iron gets absorbed into your food as you cook in the skillet, your body will be grateful for the mineral too. While a little bit of drip left on most crockery and cookware is usually a non-factor, cast iron thrives when it's moisture-free. Consistently storing your skillet with little drops of water will corrode the surface and create rust. As such, once you've cleaned your skillet, the best way to thoroughly dry it is by using paper or cotton dish towels or microfiber cloth. If you want to be extra sure, you can even place them over low heat on the stovetop for a few minutes. You can then store it by either stacking or hanging it. Should you decide to stack them, it's recommended that you place a paper towel sheet between your skillets to protect their surfaces, and you want to stack smaller skillets inside the bigger ones. Keep in mind that if you're storing Dutch ovens or cast iron skillets with an enamel coating, it's best not to stack them at all in order to avoid surface damage. You can also hang them. While this is probably more accessible, you must ensure that you're hanging them on sturdy racks and kitchen fixtures, because cast iron is heavy. Ultimately, the most important thing here is that they remain dry and far away enough that steam from other cooking or stray splashes of water from the sink does not land on your cast iron skillets.